my niche is working well I Per my license, I'm licensed to, uh, I can work with marriage and family. So that's kind of my expertise. But my personal niche is working with minority women from in the age of like 16 to 52. Because a lot of the times we're de they're dealing with the same issues. It's either work stress, relationship stress, struggle with work to life balance, struggle with setting boundaries with family. So being able to provide them with the skills to be able to do that so that they can live their full life. Because I think as me as a Black woman, I feel like, and even as a Black male, you understand, like, there's a lot of other societal pressures on us that kind of help, like, hinder us from kind of being mentally free. Like, we have these high expectations of ourselves. We're trying to keep up with our peers or even do better than our peers. And sometimes putting those unrealistic pressures on ourselves can lead to, like, us to self-doubt or even kind of low motivation and things like that. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah, because, like how you just said, like, you've seen other people appear to be doing so well, definitely on social media, because that's the age you're living in. Like, you start looking at yourself and be like, yo, I'm not living like how they're living. Because I think we all kind of looked at ourselves that way. You're like, man, I know him, but is he really doing it like that? I think I need to turn mm -hmm. it up a notch. And then when you actually go sit down and talk with the person or a friend of yours, and they be like, man, I had to borrow money from my grandma, my mom, and everybody to take this trip and did this. You were like, yo, so you didn't pay your rent, but you went out to Vegas? <laughs> exactly. And that's what I mean by helping people to rationalize their thoughts, because we're in such a society where we see so much. But unfortunately, a lot of the stuff is not reality. Like, I could post a workout from yesterday and post it this morning, like, oh, I'm so fit. That's not real time, and it's not reality. So that's, again, that the therapy process is, like, reminding yourself you can't compare yourself to them because you don't know what happened behind that post. You don't know what led up to that Vegas vacation that looks fun, but actually they came home to no lights. So I think that that's a big thing. And I think that that's actually a bigger issue with our society and comes to like the comparison and the pressure. I think social media it is horrible with that. And that's like a small thing that I try to like tell my clients when they're going through some of these things, whether it be depression, anxiety, work stress, maybe just taking like one day out of the week or like three hours out of the day and just like delete social media off your page try to find that time to be productive to read a self-help book go sit outside and get some vitamin d do something that will actually improve your mood instead of kind of attacking your mental i do individual therapy couples therapy i also facilitate groups and then also i work with agencies to come in and do like team building communication and self-care um exercises like i usually work with a lot of law firms doing that because prior to contrary belief there's a high suicide rate in lawyers so a lot of them kind of promote for having somebody maybe come in quarterly just to check in provide some self-care education so i usually facilitate a lot of groups like that as well all right do you do all of these in person or you know it's the covid happened so do you do any virtual or phone i'm um, actually since covid's happened i've been strictly virtual at this time i plan on coming back in person around August. So I've done everything virtual, even some of those groups I'm talking about. I facilitated those via Zoom as well. Um, thank God for social media. Like I've been able to do like a lot of Instagram lives and collaborate with other agencies to do Instagram lives to kind of put that information out there. All right. Would you still have this hybrid um, virtual in-person going forward? Um, I think I might because strange fact about me before COVID I was actually against virtual therapy I'm big on seeing people feeling your vibes your body language because like if you're nervous I can see your foot tapping I can see you messing with your hands but virtual I'm only getting like this yeah. so I don't really know like what's going on so before COVID I was actually against virtual but then COVID came in you ain't got no choice <laughs> So I think that I would continue it because to some extent, I've noticed some of the pros, like if I'm saying my, my majority of my client is like minority women, a lot of them are working full-time mothers. So they don't have that time to, in Houston traffic, drive all the way to an office, make it back to get their kid and deal with that versus, hey, let me take a quick lunch break or, hey, let me go in the room after I feed the kids and let me dedicate this hour to myself. So seeing the benefits of that, is kind of something that's making me want to continue to see that, to, to do virtual and in person. But at this time, I don't know what like an even balance of that looks like. So that's my goal to figure that out by August to make sure that I'm able to accommodate all of my clients and then also new incoming clients. That's good, that's good. All right, so if anybody wanna get in contact with you, can you let them know 
your social media social media handles, uh, mm -hmm. your website and everything? Yes, on Instagram, you can find me at Leah the Therapist. On Facebook, I have a business page, Liaison, L-I-A-S-O-N, Counseling Services. Um, you can also go to my website, liaisoncounselingservice.com, and then via email at liaisoncounselingservice at gmail.com. All right, all right. Well. And if you do, please feel free to reach out to me about anything mental health, because a lot of people, they don't know where to start. They don't know about insurance. They don't know about EAP. So. I just love to educate people. So if anybody has any questions and there's no such thing as a dumb question, like please feel free to like DM me, email me or anything like that. I'm always open to assist in any way. That's dope. That's dope. So if you got any questions about mental therapy, any questions in, about counseling, make sure you holla at yeah. Leo Watson <laughs> at uh, Liaison Counseling out there in Houston, Texas. So this is Pill yes. Talk. Or if you're in Louisiana, you can hit me up. I'm licensed out there as well and also on a lot of insurance panels out there as well. So if you're in Texas or Louisiana, please feel free to contact me. Or anywhere, like actually really anywhere because <laughs> mental health services are kind of the same. So I can at least direct you or assist with directing you to the right person. So anywhere, if you got any questions about mental health, please feel free to contact me. That's what it is. That's what it is. Well, thank you for coming on Pill Talk Podcast. It's been a pleasure learning a little bit about thank mental you. health and counseling. Um, we definitely have to do this again sometime soon. Yes, definitely. All right. Thank you so much for having me.